This episode is actually sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later in the video. It has been a while since the last pen plotter episode. I think it is time to start building the servo powered Z axis, or Z axis, as some people might prefer. Fabrication wise, the Z axis is definitely one of the most challenging parts of the entire pen plotter, since it consists of many small moving parts that require pretty low tolerance machining in order to work properly, hence why I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to just building the Z axis. And now that I ruined your hopes of easily replicating it, let's get started. Unfortunately, we still can't use the workbench as it is currently cluttered with parts of the half finished soldering station, so for now, we'll have to make do with the table saw instead. Tell you what, that soldering station is proving a monumental task to get finished. I'll be so glad when that video finally comes out. Anyway, this is what the Z axis looks like. It's basically just a pen holder optimized to fit as many different styles of pen as possible, driven up and down by this servo here. And what I haven't shown you on this channel so far is the way I usually transfer the dimensions from the CAD model into the real world so I can actually fabricate the parts. Not a big deal if you have a computer in your workshop, then you can just measure things as they are here. But since this computer is primarily hooked up to my monitor upstairs, I definitely do things slightly differently. So the way I usually do it is by navigating to and copying the part I want to fabricate. Then I just plunk it into the middle of nowhere where nothing else gets in the way. Hide everything else I don't need for now. And start adding all the dimensions. Once that's done, I look for a perspective where you can see pretty much everything that's going on, and then I simply take a screenshot. Then I send this screenshot to my phone, at which point I can finally start fabricating the part. I just need to look at my phone and set the table saw to whatever I want to cut. Obviously, you could also just download the SketchUp app and measure things in there, although I think my approach is faster overall, as I can do several parts in bulk, which usually takes less time than measuring everything individually. These are the upper and the lower mount for the Z-axis smooth rod, and before I weaken them by doing these cutouts, I first need to drill these holes for the linear rod, otherwise it just gets unnecessarily complex. Since these holes need to be in the exact same spot on both parts, I'm naturally going to drill them simultaneously by pressing them down on the table to make sure these edges are flush, as well as the left side here. Once they are, I just clamp it together using vice grips. If for some reason you find out the upper two edges are not totally flush, doesn't matter. The only important bit is the edge that actually glues to the X carriage, as well as the left side. Everything else, not important. And now one single, slightly smaller hole for the bottom one. This is exactly the kind of thing my mom doesn't like at all if I do on the table saw. Don't do this at home, kids. My fingers are way too close to the blade. Now, in order to glue these on, I need to take the X carriage off the rail again, which incidentally means completely disassembling it. Since we decided to make the left edge to our reference surface, we also need to make sure to line it up properly with the left edge of the X-carriage backplate. Once that's done, I drill a couple of holes for alignment pins to make sure it doesn't slide around when I glue it on. For the upper one, I do pretty much the exact same thing, except here I use a spacer to line it up really parallel to the lower one. Although, to be fair, it really doesn't need to be that precise. Just lining it up with the pencil marks should usually be sufficient. I just went way overboard, as I usually do. Next up, I need some 3.5mm smooth rod, which I'm simply going to steal from what's left of the very first pen plotter prototype. And since this is not actual, real, chrome-plated smooth rod, but rather some random round steel, it is in dear need of a little repolish, which I will quickly give it using standard household scouring cream. You could argue that I'm not using scouring cream for its intended purpose, but actually off camera I primarily do. It just comes in very handy for polishing other things than your kitchen sink as well. 
The last part to be permanently fixed to the X carriage will be this little plywood rectangle here which basically just serves as a second support for the servo. So in order to get it on there, I'm simply using the servo itself as a spacer to make some marks and then glue it on. Next up, the real deal, aka Z carriage. Basically the pen holder that slides up and down on the linear rod. As you can see, this is an insanely complex part, especially given it needs to be carved out of a single plywood block. So considering the fact that wood doesn't even make for great precision linear bearings due to expansion and contraction with changing humidity, it would probably be the best choice to just 3D print this part if you can. Speaking of 3D printing, despite as the name implies primarily being a circuit board manufacturing service, our sponsor PCBWay also offers 3D printing alongside CNC machining for literally any imaginable material. I don't even know what Bakelite is for that matter, but if you need automotive or dentistry grade parts, you're covered. As for circuit boards, you can get standard PCB prototypes with the usual one or two layers, or if that's not enough, up to 40 layers on a full feature board. And if for some reason you just can't be bothered to hand solder two dozen components to each of those 130 boards you need for your project, their PCB assembly department will happily do it for you. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, as it really helps my channel a lot. But I hear you ask, if the Z carriage would best be 3D printed, why didn't you let PCBWay print it for you? Well, at this point in time, it's already too late. Plus, to be honest, it would be really overkill, as I'm trying to keep the pen plotter as wooden as possible. However, we will get a custom controller board made by them in the next episode. Anyway, in order to cut this part out of a single piece, we first need to make a plywood block big enough. So I'm stacking a few pieces of Baltic birch, reference edge facing the table. Once everything's fully dry, I can use this reference surface to flatten the front, which in turn allows me to trim down the back to get the final reference surface. Since I'm not going to alter the bottom of the pen holder, I can use it on the crosscut sled to square off the side. Now comes the really tricky bit. Into this newly created surface, I need to cut a dado, just 3.55 millimeters wide and deep, aka just wide enough for the linear rod to smoothly slide back and forth in it. If it's too tight, it'll bind when ambient humidity rises. So if you can't get it exactly right, a little too wide is presumably the preferable option as the only thing that happens is that all the drawings of the pen plotter get less precise overall. As opposed to everything getting stuck and the pen not even lowering. And with these words of encouragement, let's see if I can ruin it somehow. First I'm doing a full cut with the reference surface facing the fence, then flipping it around more shallow passes, each time nudging the fence by a fraction of a millimeter to edge ever so slightly closer to a perfect fit. Also, keep in mind I did several test cuts to adjust the cutting depth beforehand. And It's too loose. On both ends even more so than the middle, because even the best f***ing quality blades will deflect when you try to do these super shallow scraping cuts. It just takes more off when it goes into the wood and then when it comes out of it again. As a result, the slot gets kind of an hourglass shape, which as you can see allows for a lot of wiggle. That's actually worse than on the old one. I guess that was a bad design decision. I thought I could do it, but apparently I couldn't. That's what I said, the Z-axis is the most complicated part of the pen plotter. Linear rods are just a pain in the ass, but I guess I need to come up with something to fix it. The very next evening. The easiest solution is to just super glue strips of thin paper into both ends, drill bit must be slightly greased to pull this off, which allows me to manually sand them down until I get the perfect fit I want. Incidentally, also the dirtiest hack out there, but hey, it works! Anything fancier would require me to go back to the drawing board to redesign and rebuild the entire Z carriage, which I certainly don't feel like doing right now. Maybe I'll upgrade at some point, but for now, let's just pretend that was what I intended to do from the beginning. And with that taken care of, we can continue machining the block to the right dimensions, cutting it to length and taking out a chunk to form the right linear guide. This time though, I'll be smarter and aim for a tight fit, so I can adjust it with some sanding. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, we need to cut out this little hexagon, which the pen clamps into, using the only tool that is at least somewhat suited for the job, the scroll saw. Well, that turned out even less precise than I had hoped for. As usual, the blade sort of burnt its way through the Baltic birch, which is quite normal for the scroll saw, but as you can see, it is also really crooked, which I am not a huge fan of. Though, to be fair, it really doesn't need to be that precise, only these two edges down here, the reference edges against which the pen gets clamped, only these two edges need to be sort of at a 120 degree angle, which they currently are not. And they are also slightly curved. And in case you're asking me, why don't I just use a file to get these surfaces straight? Well, it's easy. Every time you file, every time I file, and every time anyone on the entire world files, they will do slightly this kind of motion. No matter how hard they try to not do this motion, they will file something like this. And as a result, you get a slightly curved surface. And if you clamp the pen against the curved surface, well, it will not be very stable, okay? Yes, I know the design is bad, it's way too hard to manufacture, I need to redesign it. However, it has been really difficult coming up with something small, efficient, simple and compact enough to actually fit on this small X carriage. And even though I would have had a variety of different techniques to choose from to move the pen up and down like levers and hinges and whatnot, there is a very good reason why I chose linear rods over these other methods. And it is because this machine does not provide precision in the Z-axis. As you can see, the Y carriage moves up and down very slightly because the rollers aren't totally tight on the shaft, if the camera will focus. These rollers do have a little play on the shaft. So the Y carriage moves up and down, there is a little less precision. And if I use something like hinges, the pen will move laterally when it's further up or down. So, if the carriage moves up and down, the pen moves laterally. Or if I put a different material, a thicker material on to the print bed, the pen will not be in the exact same position as it will be on a flat piece of paper. So this is the reason why I chose a linear rod over some sort of hinge thingy. And as you can see, the reason for having one linear rod and this short stubby piece here was so I wouldn't have to deal with two linear rods not being entirely parallel and that sort of crap. Cool, huh? Sorry for that outbreak, didn't sleep very well tonight. Anyway, back to the pen holder. So while we can't use a file to adjust for any potential mishaps on the scroll saw, we can at least still take a chisel to it, as long as we make sure to chisel more off the middle than towards both surfaces to prevent the pen from rocking. After that, I can drill and tap the hole for an M5 tightening screw and do the last bit of shaping. These cuts actually don't need to be precise, as their sole purpose is aesthetic amelioration. And that is the pen holder thingy almost complete. Very nice and fancy. Now, since this screw goes directly into the wood, as you might have guessed, this thread is pretty prone to tearing out eventually. After all, it is just birch plywood and there is not very much surface area for the screw to grab onto. So, I am simply going to drench the inside of the hole in super glue and then potentially re tap it if that proves necessary. That's not going anywhere. Should be plenty strong, unless you tighten it like crazy, which would be completely pointless. Then I have this piece of 3mm MDF with one shiny side, which I'll put towards the dado with the linear rod inside to make it slide more smoothly, and it just screws on like so. Now, last but not least, before we can assemble this insane complexity, we unfortunately need to make one more part. It's this weird little hook shape here. I printed it on a sheet of paper so we can stick it to some 4mm ply and cut it out. Yeah. 
and now this just glues into the corner of the already overly complex Z carriage. As you'll see later, this hook allows the servo to pull the Z carriage up to actually lift the pen off the paper. That being said, it is now finally time to put everything together to assemble everything and then hopefully all our efforts of making this complex part will pay off when we get to put the pen in the machine. I'll start off by pushing the linear rod into the supports on the X carriage and covering it in a thin layer of grease, as well as applying a good amount of grease to the super glue hardened bearing surfaces on the carriage. Pop it on the rod and force it past the lower servo mount. Great, yet another design oversight! But whatever, I need to redesign it anyway. With the smooth backplate reattached, I can put in the guide pin using liberal amounts of force, as it's a very tight fit. Now, one thing most channels are probably gonna hide to you, mind you, even I was tempted to cover it up for the purpose of making the video shorter, was the fact that usually, right out of the box after assembling it, something like this usually never quite works. In fact, this does not fold down as smoothly and lightly as it should. As you can see, it takes some time to drop and doesn't quite drop all the way. So... Usually, you just need to wiggle it about for a couple of minutes, really manhandle it, push it, pull it, squeeze it, and wiggle it about for a good couple of minutes to kind of wear it in so it starts running freely. But that's something that's usually kind of covered up, and I did wiggle it about during filming and cut it out afterwards. And as you can see, now it drops quickly. Now we just need to install the servo and put everything back on the x-axis. I ended up making this cutie little red tightening knob to screw into the pen holder, incidentally the exact same one as in the CAD model, just for the heck of it, but with that done, all the mechanic side of the pen plotter is basically finished. I think it's time to try it out. Since I don't have a servo tester to control the servo without having all the electronics and whatnot ready, I'm simply going to plug it into an RC receiver and use the transmitter to control it. Maybe a little overkill, but I guess it'll get the job done. And now... Here we go! Yay! This is awesome! This is so satisfying! But the even more satisfying part is now, inserting the pen and tightening this lovely red screw knob. Of course we can't draw anything yet since none of the other axes are connected at the moment, so for now we'll just have to contend with shoving paper underneath. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I'm so glad this video is finally done. Took me two months to make it, and I'm pretty sick of it by now. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I will see you next month. Goodbye!